Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to have a very interesting discussion because we're not exactly talking about making your business successful, but we're talking about what happens later when we want to do that thing called retire. Um, you know, and, and clearly what we need to be doing is no matter what your age is, no matter what you're doing, you need to be thinking about that. And, and so we're going to have a great conversation with Kim Curtis today about how to really start preparing for making sure that you have a great retirement. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Kim. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, Deb. Perfect. I love it. And we discovered before that you're in Denver. And I always love it when I get to talk to people from my home state. It's always so much fun. So let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will dive into this. So Kim Curtis is a best-selling author of Money Secrets and Retirement Secrets and a nationally recognized wealth management advisor and speaker. She's been profiled in several publications, including the Wall Street Journal. And I want to mention specifically the book Retirement Secrets. Go ahead, show it to us. Play Vanna. Um, and so it is called Retirement Secrets, Keys to Retiring, Happy, Healthy, and free, um, you know, and, and so we really want, we're going to be talking about a lot of the concepts in the book. But first, Kim, tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today and how you discovered that this is your passion in life. Mm, man, where do you start that I kind know, of question? It's mm -hmm. such a big one. <clears throat> but I will take it. Actually, I'll take it a little further than maybe you would think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, my mother, uh, my parents got divorced, mm. and my mom ended up with full custody of three teenage girls. Oh my. And she did not have uh, any employable skills. Mm -hmm. And so she applied for and received government assisted lunch for her daughters. Mm -hmm. So I had this little red ticket that mm -hmm. I would have to <clears throat> pass to the cashier every mm -hmm. day. And I would look around me to see if any of my friends were nearby. <gasps> mm -hmm. Because I had so much shame Mm -hmm. around money and <clears throat> that I didn't have enough, right. that uh, how much, you know, just unworthiness mm -hmm. all around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and that lasted all through high school. So four years. And so, but my mom did have one thing for her daughters is to get your education mm -hmm. because no one could take it away from you. Right. I did that. I went to college and then went to law school, which brought me mm -hmm. out to Denver mm -hmm. um, and quickly thereafter defaulted on my school loans. Oh, no. So I was my own money shit show in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I was terrible because mm -hmm. I did not have an understanding of, of what was involved in creating success around prosperity. Okay. So, but, but I did have one thing, and this was an amazing uh, gift. Mm -hmm. I had an anonymous donor put $1,000 on my school loan oh. uh, debt, mm -hmm. anonymously, as I said, mm -hmm. and when I saw that my bill went down, not up, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I realized, wow, that whoever that was mm -hmm. cared more mm -hmm. about me, like that act of love mm -hmm. that I care than I cared for myself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was a signature point in my life where I had to decide, like a choice point. Right. Um, am I going to have a life of fear and sorrow mm -hmm. and lack? Mm -hmm. Or one filled with joy and happiness and prosperity. Mm -hmm. And at, from that point forward, obviously it didn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. but it was a deliberate conscious choice to change my mindset around money and mm -hmm. wealth. Right. And so that's kind of how, I mean, from crazy mm -hmm. girl in the, her 20s mm -hmm. to CEO of a multi-million dollar wealth management mm -hmm. firm um, with enormous success around money. Mm -hmm. If I could do it, oh my goodness, anyone can. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I went to law school here in Denver. My area of expertise is negotiation and mediation. Okay. 
Um, and I uh, was the youngest regional vice president in the country. And what happened as I moved up is I no longer did settlement conferences or mediations. Mm -hmm. So at 30, I did a career change. I, I had a friend who took me through a battery of tests. Mm -hmm. You know, those career tests. Right. The, yes. The, the, you the, name the, what color is your parachute-y thing? The Myers, mm -hmm. all of those things. Myers Briggs, mm -hmm. you name it. I was doing them. And what came up was financial planning. And I'm thinking, dang, man, mm -hmm. you know, I was 30. But I have young. this law degree. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but I, I, at 30, you know, when you think you're, I see it with my 24 year old and my mm -hmm. 21 year old, that mm -hmm. they, they conquer the universe quite easily right. mm -hmm. in their mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing at mm -hmm. 30 thinking, oh, I'll make this switch in mm -hmm. three to five years. I could have it all. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, five to seven years later, okay, maybe I'll get there. And then it right. was like five to 10, all you business mm -hmm. owners out there, you can relate to mm -hmm. how long right. it takes to really yeah, grow a it's, business. It's, it's kind of the next hill that you get to. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I think from my own perspective and watching some of my peers, it's, it's over, it's past the seven year mark mm -hmm. that you start to really feel like you're not doing a job, but you're actually making some money finally. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it took over seven years and mm -hmm. here I, and, and so here I am. Um, I was with a broker dealer. Um, mm -hmm. I'll tell another story around that later, but created Wealth Legacy Institute 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And here I am. So that was a long story, but I hope it kind of fills in some of these right. wild mm -hmm. things that happen to us mm -hmm. as we make choices along the way. Well, and I think that's so important because we do make those choices. And obviously they have an impact on us financially, both short term mm -hmm. and long term. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the the people who go from job to job to job to job and have like the plethora of 401ks floating around out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, your, you, your salary always takes a, a bump back a lot of times when you're doing that. Um, you know, and, and, and clearly, you know, if you're working for someone and they have a, a pension plan, things like that. There's those little words called vesting and you have to have been there a while before that happens. Um, you know, and, and, but more importantly, if you are on your own, you really have to be thinking about, okay, I have to pay the bills today. And we're all, you know, we're all in that, that mode. We have to pay the bills today. We have to pay the bills today, but we forget that at some point, unless we get hit by a bus, we have to have been planning for our financial future. And as a business owner, that's very difficult um, because, you know, it's not like, you know, in many cases, like when you work for a corporation, it's, it just, you know, that money goes off into your 401k and you never see it um, right. or, you know, whatever your equivalent is. But it is it is very tricky to really start thinking about finances. And, and, and we're not taught that in school either. Right. You know, I've, I've talked to so many people that have said, why didn't we why weren't we taught? At whatever age, I mean, you know, I'm a baby boomer, you know, the millennials, nobody's taught how to have a checking account or, you know, to save money, all of those things. Um, you know, we're just not taught that anywhere. Yeah, you know, I, agreed. I, I think the lack of financial literacy in our country only cascades into how we show up mm -hmm. as statesmen and women. Mm -hmm. in governance right um mm -hmm. you with our national debt yeah i mean you know it's like okay it's how many trillion and we just keep adding to it because and right. people are like well we just print more money no it doesn't <laughs> quite work like that <laughs> yeah, i wish we could do that in our homes mm -hmm. i i think as business owners the most important thing obviously in the beginning you're just surviving it's cash flow right it's what's coming in and what's going out mm -hmm. but with that the importance of creating a retirement plan of some sort, whether it's a simplified employee right. pension, a SEP, or, mm -hmm. or even contributing to an IRA mm -hmm. or a Roth, those things done early on are significant. And I think mm -hmm. I was really lucky when I worked at um, the dispute resolution firm. Mm -hmm. When I left, I had this little pot of money, $5,000. That's all it was. That mm -hmm. was retirement. And I'm now so thankful I did not spend it then because it was such a small amount of money. They give right. it to you. Right. And you were versus, thinking, you know, hey, look, new car or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of transferring it to another retirement account, which I did. Mm -hmm. And I'll never, ever forget this, Deb, that I remember telling my mom. Now, remember, she came divorced, didn't mm -hmm. have employable right. skills. Mm -hmm. Mom. I have from that 5,000 was mm -hmm. now 20,000 because I started to put money in right. as mm -hmm. I started this new job. Mm -hmm. Mom, I have $20,000. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember the joy I had, but right. I remember her joy because I mm-hmm. knew at that time I had more than she had, mm-hmm. which is remarkable. Right. When you think about compounding effect of money, that 20,000, mm-hmm. I remember when it turned 50. Mm-hmm. And then I remembered it when it crossed over to 100,000. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that joy, mm-hmm. when we see it grow, mm-hmm. is enough for many people to get the momentum, right. to continue to stay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in contributing to that as mm-hmm. a business owner and doing that first as part of payroll, as part of the expenses, mm-hmm. that's a fixed expense right. versus what's left over mm-hmm. at the end. Right. You know, and, and especially for business owners to be doing that, because a lot of us think I will do this until the day I die. <laughs> and conceivably we could, you know, it depends mm-hmm. on what you're doing. We could be doing this well into our, our 80s, um, you know, and, and so we don't really think about retiring, but we're usually not alone. You know, we've got a spouse that, you know, we, we need to be considering things like that might have children. We might have, you know, dip, you know, we might have parents also that, that we're mm-hmm. having to, to worry about. We'll talk about kind of how we're dealing with the sandwich generation, mm-hmm. but you know, we don't really stop to think even, you know, I might still be working when I'm 80, but I would like to work at my terms. You know, I mm-hmm. only want to work one day a week. Not a lot of us are going to be earning enough money working one day a week to to sustain what we want to do. Um, you know, and, and so again, it is about this planning. You know, it's interesting in my book, Retirement Secrets, Keys to Retiring, Happy, Healthy, Healthy and Free. Mm-hmm. We talk about side gigs. Right. Uh huh. And you had um, such a fun list in there. I was reading it and thinking, oh, thank these you. are really a lot of fun suggestions. Yes, Mm -hmm. to uh, expand your vision of what Mm -hmm. you think. Uh, But as business owners, we think it's the same business that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, What happens, I think, to many is technology kicks them out. Right. Mm -hmm. So unless you have young people around you and you're motivated on your own Mm -hmm. to stay connected, Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to work into your 80s Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the speed of technology um, and how it's disrupting every industry Mm -hmm. that we're exposed to. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's really one, how does technology affect our choices as mm-hmm. we continue to be business owners for as mm-hmm. long as we hope to. Right. And then two, how do we stay engaged mm-hmm. in retirement? Because mm-hmm. I think what we found for many part of a successful retirement is social engagement. Mm-hmm. Right. And how do we have social co- engagement? Well, mm-hmm. we discovered Zoom during the pandemic to I stay know. connected, Hello. Zoom mm-hmm. happy hours, mm-hmm. Zoom parties, Zoom mm-hmm. funerals. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had to stay connected with technology. But how do we balance that mm-hmm. with humanity and who we are and how right. we show up? Right. With those social engagements that mm-hmm. are hugging, that are mm-hmm. actual interactions mm-hmm. like you and I are having, even yeah. though we are on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and you talk about that in your book. And I think it's so important because so many times when we're thinking retirement, the only thing we're thinking about is money. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I need X amount to be able to retire. And, you know, that's the kind of, you know, for, for many people, you know, what's the number? What's the number? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and um, so, you know, we've, we've got all of those, those things, but it's, it's those other things that you're talking about. It's staying active. It's staying healthy. Um, you know, and, and, I think it's very sad and we see it happen all the time when someone retires and they sit down on the couch and they never move again. (laughs) Um, You know, and, and it's, and, you know, in in many ways that was my father. I mean, he was very, very active. He worked for the state of Colorado and, you know, was, was, you know, gone 28 hours a day. It seemed Mm. like, you know, and, and was, he was very, very active. And then he retired and it was like, now what? He didn't have hobbies besides fishing. Now, bless his <laughs> friends who would come and take him ice fishing every day. But yeah. then he'd come home and just sit, you know, and 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 he was, you know, uh, faith was not a part of his life. So, mm-hmm. you know, that was kind of a missing piece. He didn't have siblings. He didn't, you know, I had moved away and I'm an only child. And so it really was that he just kind of sat there and withered away. You know. Um- It's interesting that as a practitioner, I wrote a retirement secrets book that Mm -hmm. actually does not talk as much about the money Mm -hmm. as it does lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
I, uh, my first book, Money Secrets, mm -hmm. Keys to Smart Investing, mm -hmm. actually pulls back the curtain on the billion dollar financial services industry right. mm -hmm. to reveal why smart people make bad investment mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that book is like, in the end of each chapter, it's questions to ask yourself or mm -hmm. questions to ask someone like me mm -hmm. so that you have armor right. to be in control mm -hmm. of hiring a financial mm -hmm. practitioner mm -hmm. if you choose to. Mm -hmm. the, the second book was interesting because I had three different people all within a matter of a few months mm -hmm. ask me if I had any suggestions on that type of a book. Mm -hmm. So as a researcher, a data girl, mm -hmm. I went and bought these books of, that mm -hmm. I thought may have information. Mm -hmm. I read them all. Mm -hmm. And there were only about three that I thought had good enough information. Mm -hmm. There was one that I really liked, but it was written terribly. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote that book. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote that book that actually is, you could have all the money in the world and have mm -hmm. a failed retirement. Mm -hmm. What are those keys mm -hmm. to success mm -hmm. beyond money? Right. And, and it's so interesting because we save and save and save and save and save mm -hmm. if we're lucky enough mm -hmm. to, and, and for this day, whatever mm -hmm. this day happens that we look forward to, mm -hmm. and then we step off mm -hmm. and we really don't know how to spend our time like your dad, right. what's next? Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a planned, structured mm -hmm. uh, approach, it will fail you. Mm -hmm. It's just like anything in mo with money. Mm -hmm. Money is, you know, people hire us when they have enough money that they want to invest it. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tie that to a financial plan, mm -hmm. then it's like archery without a bullseye. You have mm -hmm. no idea of your success. Right. Yeah. So you're just kind of shooting it. It's, it's something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to fail, particularly mm -hmm. in markets like today mm -hmm. that are very chaotic. Right. Yeah. You don't are you know. saving for something that's 20 years from now? Right. Or are you doing, you know, you want to take a round the world cruise in five years? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So once you put it in perspective with a financial plan, it's easier to ride those mm -hmm. ups and downs. Right. So if you had a, a, a triangle, mm -hmm. like a pyramid, mm -hmm. at the bottom of that is investing, managing right. money. Mm -hmm. Above that is goal achievement. It could be, like you said, the sandwich of taking care of an aging parent, mm -hmm. uh, education funding, retirement, of course. Mm -hmm. You put those together, you need to, to be able to have long-term money and mm -hmm. life success. Mm -hmm. Above that is lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because money for most people is up here and it's frenetic. Right. Mm -hmm. If we can put it down here through planning and investing as a mm -hmm. foundational source, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that investing and goals, you get to that next lifestyle, you have peace of mind. Right. You have the the air to breathe, mm -hmm. to actually think at that pinnacle of that pyramid mm -hmm. is impact. Mm -hmm. It's legacy. It's impact. It's right. what's important to you. Mm -hmm. So if you think about why we do all these things mm -hmm. and, and as a practitioner, mm -hmm. we move our clients up this pyramid to get to the place of peace of mind. So they have the space to think about what's next. Mm -hmm. Right. What am I going to do in the next 30 years mm -hmm. of my life mm -hmm. that is going to be filled with joy and happiness and fulfillment? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this book. Right. And that's what I love about giving the roadmap or the blueprint mm -hmm. to actually create what that success mm -hmm. may look like for you specifically. Right. You know, and, and you mentioned lifestyle. I mean, that's that's a huge thing that so many people, you know, they're just like, well, I'm going to continue the way I am. Well, they might be able to, I mean, you know, and, and, but they, you know, many times they can't for a variety of reasons. You know, maybe they're the people that take a really long vacation every year. <laughs> that might not be possible. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, things like, you know, they, they, um, they go to a lot of uh, sporting events or concerts or things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that takes quite a bit of money too. But again, it comes back to your your health and things like that. Um, you know, you see the people who are in their homes 30, 40, 50 years, and they can't take care of them any longer mm -hmm. because they can't mow. They can't get out and, and do those things. Um, my mother, bless her heart, see, I can say that because I live in the South. Um, <laughs> she is 89 years old and she lives in Kansas and is still living alone. Um, she, you know, and, and, but she has great people who check in on her every day, um, including her sister. She's got a great neighbor. But the one thing that, that she said when she sold her house in Colorado was, I'm not buying another house. And, and so she has this landlord who, you know, I think sometimes cringes when she calls, but she also, you know, she knows I'm paying for this. I am paying mm -hmm. for 
someone to mow the lawn and you know all of those things and so why is that not happening but she really did think okay i'm i want something much smaller i don't want to have to take care of my lawn you know all of those things and that is part of that lifestyle thing well and planning again mm -hmm. <laughs> having the game plan of knowing the house that you're currently in may not be the house that you retire mm -hmm. in or you retire in it Mm -hmm. But 20 years later, you know, you will not right. stay in there yeah. because you and I were talking about the fact that stairs, stairs yeah. are not a good thing for older people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or the maintenance or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that those are the questions uh, that are so important to ask. And if you have a, a spouse, mm -hmm. you, ha you have your own unique goals and right. desires mm -hmm. and your spouse has their own. Right. And how do you keep your own identity and yet then bridge together? What are you going to do mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. Um, because you may love gardening mm -hmm. and to be out there and that could mm -hmm. be your happy place, right? but certainly not the happy place for your mate. Mm -hmm. And so, and yet you don't want to cook or do things for your mate when they're re no longer working mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, get your own lunch. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. so those are questions for couples to ask mm -hmm. and to do exercises, which mm -hmm. retirement secrets does mm -hmm. of to ask yourself those questions individually and then to come together because mm -hmm. someone may have a very different vision of what their right. retirement lifestyle looks mm -hmm. like. They may think it's in the city mm -hmm. when you may think it's in your house right, right. now mm -hmm. where all your neighbors are and mm -hmm. all your girlfriends are mm -hmm. and all the things and your, your faith. If you go to church, I mean, you're a huge collective social circle mm -hmm. and yet you may, well, may not have that circle and right. may be like, let's start off. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do this mm -hmm. differently. Right. And yeah, that's not and very some much people fun. do choose to do different. Um, yeah. You know, it was interesting. I was reading your book and, and in there you talk about, you know, the people who there's there's two different ones in there that, that I love. One is the people who are the RV folks. <laughs> I have cousins who are they would be in their their mid to late 70s. They're on their fifth year of RV life um at least i mean it might even be longer ago than that and and you know they made very conscious decisions of you know it's it's not the big bus it's mm -hmm. you know a big fifth wheel that they tow with a pickup so that way they've always got transportation and they're not pulling a vehicle because that always causes some issues um and they you know when they go places they typically stay for at least a month mm -hmm. that way you know they can can basically take up residence uh you know and and they do have a permanent address. I think that's one of the things that sometimes people forget because mm -hmm. people like the IRS need to know where you are. <laughs> um, and so it's one of their kids, right? You know, mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing is one of their children uh, is a family practitioner. And so she's able to prescribe and kind of, you know, they were doing the whole virtual medicine thing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, long before COVID hit. But, you know, they really did think a lot about it. But there's even just some other little things that I, I get a kick out of. Um, you know, like I, I mentioned, it's the big pickup with the, the fifth wheel. He, my, my, the, the, my cousin, he cannot back that up. So he can't <laughs> back it up into a spot in an RV park. So he, they either have to go to a place where they pull through or there's somebody there that can back it up. And, and I mean, most people are thinking, why would you even think about that? He, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure what happened was he realized, oh, oh we've got a problem here. <laughs> you know, we can't do this. <laughs> but that is part of what they do is they really think about that. But then you've also got the folks and you talk about this in your book who decide I'm going to move elsewhere, as in not in the United States. And I <laughs> love that concept. Um, mm. But that, oh, my gosh, tons of planning that goes into that. Well, and, you know, I, Deb, I so appreciate that you mentioned that because the the how do I say it? The uh, RV, I will just call them the RV or, mm -hmm. uh, but the one that's moving along, mm -hmm. how, there's some tax issues associated with that. Right. Mm -hmm. What is your permanent address? And mm -hmm. is the address in a state that mm -hmm. actually gives you some tax incentives? Right. Uh -huh. So that's all part of mm -hmm. some of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then for our clients that actually left the US that are US citizens that decided mm -hmm. to retire elsewhere, like Portugal, mm -hmm. Uh, or Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those are some big ones right, right. now that mm -hmm. a lot of uh, mm -hmm. US people are at. They have to go through the visa mm -hmm. and they have to think about healthcare mm -hmm. and they have to think about where how their money exchanges right. to mm -hmm. your to the euro. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have a transfer agent. Mm -hmm. And and it's fascinating these different and I think my book talks about in that one section all the different things to think about mm -hmm. if you're looking internationally. Right. I mean, one of the simple things is you probably need to have visited at least once during each season 
to True. see, okay, do I like yeah. winter here? You know, it sounds like a great place for summer, but oh my God, the winters are horrible. You know, that yeah. type of thing. You know, it, uh, it's funny that not everyone falls into this, but there is kind of uh, that the average stay that we have seen person that I've seen personally is mm -hmm. around three years mm -hmm. that a U.S. citizen can stay internationally in a way that they feel because they get they get lonely. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, their friends are, and family are all back in the States. I mean, they could have an expat community, which they mm -hmm. do and they create and they find each other quickly. But, uh, you know, we had a client that moved to Costa Rica mm -hmm. and they loved it. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point where like every day is a holiday kind of mm -hmm. thing that they weren't necessarily taking care of themselves as well as they would have liked. Ah, So, uh, you know, everyone has their own thing. Mm -hmm. But Costa Rica, I mean, yes. Yeah. Hello. But again, but the weather, eek. <laughs> over time without mm -hmm. the change of seasons and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh interesting and a lot of questions to ask to find yeah. out what's your ideal and mm -hmm. and experiment mm -hmm. you may not find the right place for the first right. time mm -hmm. you may get an rv and mm -hmm. enjoy it for a year mm -hmm. and then sell it mm -hmm. i think if you approach retirement mm -hmm. as an experiment and mm -hmm. as a journey right then whatever choice you make is going to get you closer to whatever it mm -hmm. is your best best mm -hmm. right and right. i think that's really the best way to approach it is um, and a, a journey of, mm -hmm. of choices in each one kind of course, correct, course, correct, course, right. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and some people really do love kind of that nomad life. That's the um, word I couldn't think of quick that's enough. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, you know, and it's, it doesn't matter really what age, um, you know, I've talked with right. nomads who, you know, they've got young kids and it's the greatest thing in the world for them. And these kids are getting quite the education, but they've said, you know, when they hit X age, they need to be in a school, you know, they need that partially for the, the socialization, um, you know, the, the band, the choir, the sports, the other kids, I mean, all of those things. Um, but, you know, and, but I, I also have a friend who, you know, her, her uh, brother is, um, you know, he's, he's in his early forties and it, both he and his wife can work virtually and have been able to do this before COVID. And so they go to various B, uh, Airbnbs and, you know, or, or VRBOs or whatever the heck you're calling it. And, and they will tell the folks, we want to stay for three months. So what kind of discount can you give us? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to do the cleaning. We're going to do all of that stuff that you have to do when you're turning it over every weekend. And, and they said, you know, basically they end up paying the mortgage is, is, you know, what they're mm -hmm. doing and, and, and mm -hmm. the utilities. So pretty much what you'd be doing if you were in your own place, but they're able then to just go from place to place to place. And, but part of that is because they've already started testing out where do we want to retire? Well, and I love that idea, whether it be Airbnb mm -hmm. or whatever the venue is, uh, you could do that in Spain and Barcelona. Right. Mm -hmm. You could do that in New York city. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and to be able to, without having to set roots, be able to enjoy mm -hmm. the city, uh, New York City during the holidays, if that's important right. to you. Mm -hmm. So I love with technology how we've been able to do way more things right. than we have been able mm -hmm. to do prior mm -hmm. uh, through the transfer of money and to find right. these beautiful finds mm -hmm. yeah. as homes. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, pre-COVID, I don't think a lot of us thought about these options. And, and then we discovered, ooh, we really can work remotely, um, you know, and, and, and you can be in different places. And, you know, maybe your boss wants you to come in, you know, at a certain point in time, fine. Then you go in and, and, and you're there. But there's so many other things. But it's the, the other thing that it, it also has, has happened is, you know, one of the things that happens when people retire is, okay, you used to have your own space and your own time <laughs> when one or both went off to work, right? Mm -hmm. And now because of COVID, we got thrown into that much sooner. Um, I'm definitely one of those. You know, my husband would leave for the office at <clears throat> 5.30 every morning. I went, bye. <laughs> you know? yeah. and and he'd get home 4 35 o'clock and so i had that you know and i and i worked from home for 20 years so i had that nice big gap of time in there where it was just me 
Mm-hmm. And then COVID hit and he's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, we were fortunate that we didn't also have kids or somebody else that, that mm-hmm. was all of a sudden with us. But yeah, so we, you know, we got into that, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're together 24 hours a day before we'd really planned on it. And luckily it's worked out really well. But, but yeah, for some people, I mean, that was kind of an eye-opening moment to go, well, wait a minute. And, and it's funny, I, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was, you know, am I, yeah, I'm not making lunch for you. No. Right. right. We heard that a lot mm-hmm. uh, with our clients before they stepped off and mm-hmm. negotiating chores. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like this is not my job. Nope, mm-hmm. nope, nope. Mm-hmm. We are splitting this yeah. and here's your role and yeah. here's my role. And mm-hmm. they actually wrote it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, several oh, yeah. of them. Almost like a, that a contract. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's so true. You know, um, it's funny that you mentioned that, that COVID kind of threw us into mm-hmm. these difficult whether it be space, Mm -hmm. whether it be conversations with your mate, Mm -hmm. whether you still love your mate, Mm -hmm. you know, it was um, nice when they went away and then, yeah, yeah. (laughs) exactly. So how does that change? Is Mm -hmm. that someone you want to spend the rest of your life with? And we've discovered that going into retirement um, without a mate is a little harder. Of course, Mm -hmm. it's a lot more fun with a mate. Mm -hmm. However, there is, they call it the great divorce. Mm -hmm. Right. where uh, the mate's going, I'm not doing this for you, right. especially yeah. if you're going to be home. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I did it with our kids. I did it mm-hmm. with whatever. Right. And now I want this to be all about mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. and I'm not going to take care of you and, and end up getting divorced. Um, so we, I, there's a chapter in there that I, I talk about the, the uh, big D, the big D's, mm-hmm. uh, the D's and then the big, big B mm-hmm. and the big B is boredom. Mm-hmm. Um, right. If you're oh, yeah. not boredom is huge, yes. mm-hmm. intellectually engaged, mm-hmm. emotionally engaged, socially engaged, um, that's a failed retirement. Mm-hmm. And, and as you talked about your right. dad, it's tough. Mm-hmm. It's not the way we envision. Mm-hmm. We also think that we're going to live, 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 mm-hmm. do really great, go into mm-hmm. our 80s, and then we die. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't. It doesn't go like healthy, right. healthy, healthy, yeah, healthy, healthy. No, it's, and then it's we start kind of coasting down. <laughs> we do, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. So it's really important to recognize certain activities that occur in decline mm-hmm. uh, as we age so we can manage that along mm-hmm. the way. Well, and, and of course, the tricky thing is when one has limitations far earlier than the other. Um, yes. You know, and, and my parents, again, would be a great example of that. And, and that was partially because there was a 14 year age gap between them. And so my mother was still very active and my father was elderly, um, you know, and and mm. and had health issues and, and all sorts of things. And that was that was definitely a challenge for them. Plus, they lived in a, a high mountain town. So there weren't a lot of options even, mm. you know, and, and mm. you know, like I said, bless those folks who came and picked him up every day and took him fishing. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's one of those things that you need to be thinking about is what happens if, um, you know, and, and, or, you know, I, we briefly mentioned that sandwich generation, you know, Mm -hmm. you might have this great retirement planned out and kids and or parents move back in or both, (laughs) you know, and, and so then what do you do? You know, I, uh, I lost my mom this year. Mm -hmm. And my older sister and I, for someone who's in the business and still made mistakes mm-hmm. as it relates to taking care of an aging mm-hmm. parent. So as a result of that, my sister and I put together uh, an aging parent checklist mm-hmm. and it's uh, 26 plus pages. Wow. And I, I think we're going to give that away for yeah, free. Yeah, we're going right? to have that, that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. So, so this, it, it goes as deep as what is the music? that mm-hmm. your parent right. wants to hear. Mm-hmm. So you can put together or the TV programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's how deep we go into it. Of course, we talk about finances mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, and where the beneficiary designations and various mm-hmm. other things. But back to that divorce or mm-hmm. aging parent or 15 year distinction mm-hmm. difference. Mm-hmm. What happens if your parent loses their mate, you lose a parent right. mm-hmm. and then your, your parent remaining remarries. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, and having to you, deal with you that. might have not just a, a step parent, but step family. <laughs> you know? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And how do you navigate that at their death, mm-hmm. as it relates to the extended family right. and the distinctions around mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. So those are all part of understanding what their desires are, mm-hmm. and being very clear mm-hmm. with the adult children. Right. Mm-hmm. It could be as where's if there's a. If there's a plot, a, a mm-hmm. cemetery plot, right? 
Where does mom first... go? With dad yes. or with? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Which that could be a big area of dispute or concern mm-hmm. or struggle with the adult children mm-hmm. thinking that their mom is going to end up with their dad at that burial site mm-hmm. when the dad's remarried and right. has no mm-hmm. desire to go mm-hmm. back there. Mm-hmm. So those are just little nuances mm-hmm. that actually for oh, yeah. adult children, mm-hmm. boomers ha- are addressing. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and, you know, things like, you know, who gets what, um, right. you know, and, and, and that's where obviously, you know, not only should there have been financial planning, but there does need to be wills and trusts mm-hmm. and all of those things. It very clearly spells it out, especially if there, you know, are, are some things that are fairly substantial, um, like money, like property, you know, all of those various things, because yeah, you know, you get the stepkids in there and now, I mean, you <laughs> might have multiple families, you know, it's, you know, that the, one of the, the partners might have been married multiple times. And so you got all mm-hmm. sorts of kids that are in there and, and grandkids and, you know, all sorts of things. And so that's where it really behooves everybody, you know, that, that you've got that will that you have. And, and more importantly, you know, things like the medical power of attorney, yes. you know, mom, you know, mom's remarried. Who gets to make those decisions? You know, is it the new husband? Is it her kids? You know, all of those things. And 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 we don't like to think about those things, but it's, you know, anytime and you know, anytime I talk with people about them that that do this for a living, they say, you know, just remember it's a gift that you're giving to those people. That, so yes. they're not fighting over who gets the teacup. Very, very true. I mean, when you think of healthcare and power of attorneys. Mm-hmm your parents' doctor will not talk to you unless you sign that HIPAA Mm -hmm. uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. unless your parent has signed that HIPAA Mm -hmm. agreement. So, so taking care of all those things so you could actually have a conversation Mm -hmm. with their doctors Mm -hmm. to understand what is really going on. Mm -hmm. And then the difficult conversation with your aging parent is how far do you want to take this? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want, do you want a surgery to live longer Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. Is this enough? Like what, mm-hmm. how much is enough for you? Mm-hmm. And in my mom's perspective, she lived a great, great, great life, mm-hmm. did not want to go into a hospital mm-hmm. and be sa- saved. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so wanted to stay at home. So what does mm-hmm. that mean? That means 24 seven care. Right. As not in the beginning, mm-hmm. but as we kind of navigated right. through this mm-hmm. and it, so you have to have those conversations about money. You have to have those conversations about what is their net worth? Where does mm-hmm. everything fit in? You mm-hmm. have to have the, the, whose role, mm-hmm. if there are children, adult mm-hmm. children, who's doing this, mm-hmm. who's doing right. this, and who's doing this? Mm-hmm. And those are all really, really tough, mm-hmm. tough conversations. But to have them while your adult, while your parent is alive mm-hmm. uh, makes it so much easier for the children later because I can't tell you how often in the nature of my work that we see families fracture at right. the death mm-hmm. of the parent that could call a meeting and everyone mm-hmm. would show up. Mm-hmm. Now there's no elder right. that could mm-hmm. call a meeting. Mm-hmm. And so no one shows up anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Or they show up and fight. Um, yes. You know, and, and simple things too, like, you know, where are the bank accounts? Where's the life insurance? Now, you know, my mother, you know, bless her heart again. She had, now I am an only child. And so this does make it easier, but she's, she is organized. She knows who her pallbearers will be. I mean, you know, yeah, and, oh, that's helpful. But, but, oh, yeah, you know, and and but she does. She has everything written down. I mean, she literally has the songs that she wants mm-hmm. at her funeral. Yes. Um, I mean, that's just her. She's she's a master planner, and I'm like, yeah, right. It's my decision. Mm-hmm. But um, but you know, she does have all of these other things that are taken care of. And and one of the discussions that that I had with her is, you know, I like I said, I'm the only child, and so I am you know, the, the, her medical power of attorney. I mean, I'm, I'm that, that person. And then, you know, she had my husband on there. That's great. We live a thousand miles away Mm -hmm. and, and her sister is there all the time. She's one of the people that takes care of her all the time. And I said, you know, mom, she needs to be on that too, because first of all, I trust her to make Mm -hmm. decisions. Um, I said, but more importantly, some of those decisions might need to be made immediately. And, and I said, and I don't want anything slowing down what that decision would be because I couldn't be reached because I couldn't get there, all of those various things. Um, and so, you know, she's, she has done that and, and, but yeah, that's, that's kind of, and you know, it's, it gets a little trickier for people who 
you know, maybe they don't have children or, you know, mm -hmm. or they don't have children that they trust to do it. Right. There's mm -hmm. those too. But, you know, you, you have to have, even if it's just the, an attorney or somebody, you have to have that because again, it's a gift that you're giving to people because why leave them with the mess? Right. You know what you said, where are the bank accounts? Mm -hmm. uh, it's true. And the passwords. They're... I discovered that that's very tricky. When I was very ill, my, I pay all the bills and my husband's like, I don't know the passwords to, to That's right. do the online banking and the online bill pay. Yes. And, and discover, and I discovered that my mom had a safety deposit box. Ah, mm -hmm. So you always want to empty those beforehand. You don't mm -hmm. want yeah. to have that go into the estate mm -hmm. and to try to figure out whether you have access right. to this box mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So things like that are all very, mm -hmm. very important that on the other side, make it so much easier for whoever is left right. to clean, to settle the estate. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and again, you're just making it easier for them. Um, it is, right. yeah, it is difficult conversations, but you know, it's, it's, you know, and, and, and it's really funny. I, I have to share with you, you know, we, we redid our wills not long ago and, you know, we don't have kids. We're assuming, you know, my mother is our only living parent, mm -hmm. you know, we've lost all the others and, you know, and, and so we, you know, we have trust, we have things like that set up, but you know, it's like, okay, well, okay. We, we have no heirs. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, we were talking before the program, big university, of Colorado people, both my husband and I. And so, you know, we have set up a trust that then will go to the university. And it's really funny because you sign all that paperwork. Um, and, you know, and, and they're like, woohoo, we love you. And, mm -hmm. and you're treated as a major donor, at least, mm -hmm. you know, they, they are at our level. And I remember I was talking with them one time and, and I have, you know, because I volunteered with them so much, I, uh, you know, know the people in their foundation. And I said, you know, now I, I just got to, you know, if, if we both die tomorrow, the university gets a whole bunch of money or, you know, you might get 50 cents if we live a long time and have a good time. <laughs> and this young man looks at me and very sagely says, we wish for you a long but frugal life. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. But you know, it really is. And those, those are not legally binding documents, you know, when right, you're doing right. something like that. Um, but, but it is put into our will then that that's the way it is. And, and thing, you know, but yeah, it's just, you know, and so you could be thinking about, okay, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, and you can be thinking about it long before you really, you know, something is going to happen to you. Yes. And, and you could actually, as your mother has, mm -hmm. really lay it out mm -hmm. in a very detailed way right. to make it very, very easy. Mm -hmm. My mother did the same thing mm -hmm. that she she was active in her church, in mm -hmm. her small community. She had the hymns picked out. Mm -hmm. She had everything. She had already paid for everything, mm -hmm. you know, with the local funeral home. Mm -hmm. And she met with the pastor to just to define everything. So mm -hmm. we were really grateful. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's it is something that it takes a little bit of thought, um, you know, as, as to what you want it to be. And, and, but it, it also can change. I mean, you know, that's the other thing is, you know, this, like you said, somebody might yeah. get married, somebody might pass away. I mean, there's all sorts of things that can happen. So that's the other thing I think that people really need to, to keep tabs on is, okay, we wrote this document. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll do something like this when they have small children because mm -hmm. they want to make sure if something happens to them, the children are taken care of. Okay. Now those kids are in their twenties, their thirties, their forties. Maybe things are different now. <laughs> you know? Well, not only that, we talked about financial literacy mm -hmm. earlier and um, really how, how do we learn mm -hmm. money? Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you think about this whole conversation that we're having, as we, we start, a, we start, earning money and saving mm -hmm. and we get ready for retirement, mm -hmm. all these transitions. Mm -hmm. And this next transition that you and I have been talking about is death. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you think about passing money to the next generation, mm -hmm. are they prepared? Mm -hmm. What have you done? If it's your role, depending right. on where they are mm -hmm. in their ages, yeah. are they going to blow it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't know if you've heard this before, but there's actually, um, an expression that calls it shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations. Yeah. And it's true in any mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be clogs to clogs or mm -hmm. rice patty to rice patty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And basically the premise around this is that there, the, the entrepreneur has this mm -hmm. vision and creates this company mm -hmm. and creates wealth. Mm -hmm. And the next generation 
inherits that wealth mm-hmm. and they join the, they move to the city and mm-hmm. they join the country club or right. mm-hmm. the arts. Um, and the third generation uh, has no money and the family is fractured. Right. Because mm-hmm. so it got spent. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so how do you do human capital mm-hmm. as it relates to the next generation that they're prepared mm-hmm. and that each generation has to have its own vision? Mm-hmm. They can't take on the vision of the wealth creator. Right. It's not their vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the company, they might not want to run that right. company. Right. So, so there is actually trainings and things to create the next generation of leaders so that they can be their own next gen, first gen, right. instead of saying I'm gen three or mm-hmm. I'm gen two mm-hmm. from this wealth that was created mm-hmm. generations before you, your great grandfather. Right. So money and everything attached mm-hmm. to that has so much mm-hmm. baggage around it, right. unless it was purposefully mm-hmm. thought out and um, understood as it relates to conversations Mm -hmm. with next gen, your children Mm -hmm. or grandchildren Mm -hmm. around what money um, stewardship Mm -hmm. means and what Mm -hmm. are the values of the family Mm -hmm. and what are the values of how you show up Mm -hmm. in that community. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and as you said, it's having those, those conversations. It's been, oh, probably a couple (sighs) months ago or so where Shaquille O'Neal was, you know, and, and he got to love him. I mean, you know, he's just going to say what he wants to say (laughs) and, and, I don't know how many millions he's worth, but it's a lot. And he still has a lot of earning potential, you know, if he stays healthy. I mean, you know, this he's he's going to be around for a while. But he was talking about the fact that he, I, I don't know how many children he has, but he said, they will not inherit my wealth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, whoever he was talking to was like, what? And he said, you know, I'm not going to leave him destitute. Right. But, and I love this. He said, they didn't earn it. And, and he said, I did, and I will do with it what I want, but they didn't earn it. And, and, and so what he was doing was he's setting them up to know, Mm -hmm. okay, I got to make it on my own now, you know, however they do that. And like he said, he wouldn't leave them destitute, but I, I love that because it was, you know, I'll help you, but don't expect that you're going to earn, you know, you're going to get X and whether that's, you know, that the the money, the house, the whatever, you know, you need to stand on your own two feet. Very, very important conversations mm-hmm. to have with your children. Mm-hmm. Warren Buffett, the same mm-hmm. uh, with his children and grandchildren. I, I think that inheriting can be a curse mm-hmm. to that generation right. that inherits mm-hmm. it. Oh so yeah. There's I all these television story. shows that are on, you know, so, and so, and so kids of the stars. And first of all, I'm thinking, I don't know any of them, um, <laughs> but I look at it and my very, you know, I almost always think what spoiled brats they are. Mm. And they're probably, I mean, it's TV, right. they're playing stuff up. I mean, all of those things are probably actually very nice people, but yeah, it is. It's this, you know, entitlement I think is, is probably the, mm-hmm. the, the thing. Here we go, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, it, it dawned on me, one of the things that we didn't talk about was what exactly is the definition of retirement? Mm. It's different for each person. Mm. It's different for each person, I, 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 which I love that question because mm-hmm. what does that mean to you? That's the question to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. What does that look like to you? Because a lot of people still work. Right. They retire from... Mm-hmm the job, mm-hmm. but do something more that they love. Right. Yeah. Some people that retire early. And again, what I mean by early is mm-hmm. 65 is the Holy grail for social mm-hmm. security, for, excuse mm-hmm. me, for Medicare. Right. Mm-hmm. So people that retire earlier have this gap <laughs> where, yeah, they, they have to pay a lot of big expenses in some cases. It's a risk. It's a variable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so with understanding that risk and that variability of their plan, mm-hmm. um, that healthcare is their biggest dis- mm-hmm. uh, concern. Right. And so many of them may do a side job mm-hmm. that provides for health care. And a lot of those side jobs are the jobs they've always wanted to do, but didn't. Yes. Right. They, they go to work in, you know, say a gardening shop or, mm-hmm. you know, health, you know, like child care, um, mm-hmm. all sorts of things. Like you, you know, you did discuss this in your book with the side gigs and, and yeah, the list was really pretty interesting. And what I thought was, yeah, those are things that, People probably always went, or maybe they volunteered for them before. Now, mm-hmm. wow, now they could get paid. Right, right. So that's one thing. And then the second is, is 
when do you take social security? Mm -hmm. You know, and that often determines a lot for people as to when they officially retire. Mm -hmm. Because once you hit your full retirement age, mm -hmm. that delay, whether it's 66 or 67, mm -hmm. is like an 8% increase in your mm -hmm. annual social security right. amount mm -hmm. until age 70, mm -hmm. full, re you know, full retirement age. So, so that's a decision that, that as they mm -hmm. go through, okay, I want to work, I want to work till 70 if I can. Mm -hmm. Because I want to wait and really get maximum social mm -hmm. security. Right. Uh, Assuming there's still social security. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There's a lot of questions around that, but it wouldn't take much to put social security back on the right track. Right. Because mm -hmm. remember, when Roosevelt started mm -hmm. the social security plan back in the 30s, mm -hmm. the average life expectancy of an American at that time was 65. Right. Yeah. So, so they, they were, they were they planning were on this out. money having to last for so long. <laughs> mm hmm. So if they adjusted it to what our life expectancy mm -hmm. is closer to, mm -hmm. then I, I think that it wouldn't take much to, mm -hmm. to put it back in solvency. Right. Yeah. I do, and I don't think it's nearly as dire as a lot of people yeah, like I would to agree. say it is. Mm -hmm. I would agree. We are a country that it is filled with ingenuity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I think of the human story, it's a constant struggle mm -hmm. between hope and optimism and right. where are we? And that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about with retirement mm -hmm. and the definition of retirement. It's a constant mm -hmm. struggle of, of health and, mm -hmm. and desires. Mm -hmm. And to finally have you all your life, someone tell, else telling you what to do, possibly, mm -hmm. unless you own your business. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're telling yourself what mm -hmm. to do to finally just do what you really want to mm -hmm. do. Right. Well, and that and is I, the freedom. What I love is when I see people who, you know, work forever for, you know, corporate America, or maybe even they own their own business, they retire and then they start a brand new business. Yes. And, you know, and that's always so much. A lot of times they're consultants, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things, but that's what's so much fun because then again, that's where their passion really is coming in. And it's so much fun to see those. In the, uh, in my book, Retirement Secrets, mm -hmm. we have a retirement mapping profile ah, mm -hmm. and that retirement mapping profile goes through over 500 it was different a huge activities. List. It went page after page after page. <laughs> I know. I know. I struggled with that. I struggled mm -hmm. with that. But, but, uh, I mean, when you see all the possibilities and expand mm -hmm. your, your options, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you get, you begin to start to get clarity right. around what jazzes you, what mm -hmm. excites you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the Holy grail. I mean, for working all your life, 30, 40 years and to have the next 20, 30 years to be able to do what you love mm -hmm. on purpose with right. vision, mm -hmm. with a plan, mm -hmm. with some of these things we talked about right. mm -hmm. so that it is your best mm -hmm. 30 years, mm -hmm. last right. 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, what a gift. A gift mm -hmm. that you give to yourself and right. a gift that you give to generations mm -hmm. beyond mm -hmm. and even generations not born yet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, why I love what I do. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and when we see seniors that are truly enjoying life, mm -hmm. it just makes you feel good. Um, I, I have a lot of clients that are senior living communities and and we work with them in their their marketing and and one of you know and, and so i get i get pretty attached to some of these residents because i see their pictures every single day and and all of these and to see what they're doing um you know and and they're living in in a retirement community independent living even the ones that are in memory care you you still see that joy in their mm -hmm. life and and i think that's when it's so sad is when you don't you know, mm. and, and, and a big part of it was because they didn't plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That's so true. That's so true. Uh, how do you keep that momentum mm -hmm. of joy? We have a, we actually have, it's called the happiness doesn't retire. Ah, very and cute. Mm -hmm. We have stickers and flags mm -hmm. and different things. And mm -hmm. on Instagram, the happiness doesn't retire Instagram mm -hmm. page. It's people, clients, or others taking this sticker mm -hmm. or a flag and, ex and doing what they love and what brings them joy. Right. And when you go to the Instagram page to see, like, you know, it would be a flight of beer, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's a happiness doesn't retire mm -hmm. uh, for that individual. But mm -hmm. what brings you joy? Mm -hmm. What are the activities that you do that mm -hmm. bring joy? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, that Instagram page on happiness doesn't retire mm -hmm. is it, it's just going to the page brings mm -hmm. you joy because you see everyone mm -hmm. else's right, joy right. and how they express it. 
for some reason, what popped into my head just now was George Bush skydiving, right? <laughs> you know, when he, and, and, you know, you, you really just, you know, I'm sure everybody is going, oh, ah, ah, you know? <laughs> but just the joy that that brought him mm -hmm. and the fact that everybody around him said, okie dokie, you know, take yeah. the safety precautions. You know, he clearly didn't jump alone. He did the buddy jump yeah. type of thing. Yeah. You know, all of those various things. But he still did it, you know, and, right. and, and I think that's the other thing is in retirement, a lot of times we have people who mean well and say, oh, are you sure you should be doing that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where, you know, as that person, you need to say, yepers, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to jump out of that plane. I'm going to go on that cruise. Right. I'm going to do whatever. You know, with the pandemic, it isolated a lot of our seniors. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and. And many of them didn't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom as one of them. But when I think of engagement and social engagement, mm -hmm. one of the things in the book that my book talks about is animals. Mm, right. And having a dog or a pet. Mm -hmm. And and I know you're a dog lover. Mm -hmm. I'm a dog lover. My mm -hmm. mom had a dog. The dog's mm -hmm. name was Prada. The dog mm -hmm. was about this big, the size uh -huh. of a handbag. Mm -hmm. And I had to put the dog down before my mom exited the planet. And that was the hardest thing. It's like, who's going to do the deal with the dog? Right. And again, back to those conversations, mm -hmm. but that kept her mm -hmm. going right. when she was socially right. isolated mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Yeah, dog, cat, parakeet, you whatever. name it, mm -hmm. you name it, whatever mm -hmm. that, that calming, mm -hmm. you know, or the unconditional love mm -hmm. or whatever that is mm -hmm. that you get from your animal mm -hmm. uh, really does make a difference. Right. right. Well, oh my gosh, Kim, you know, this is, this has been so, you know, it's been fun. It's also been very enlightening um, mm. because I think it is something that, like we said, if you're 20, if you're 70, you need to be thinking about all of this um, and making those sometimes hard decisions, but good decisions, the, the mm -hmm. healthy decisions. And I think that's the thing is, you know, these are mentally healthy decisions, um, right. you know, and, and so tell people how they you know, what services your uh, company provides and then how do they, they reach you? Yeah, thank you. Primarily what our firm really specializes in is that transition from working, saving okay. to transitioning to retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that in our sleep all day long, but on all these things, we talked about that pyramid mm -hmm. and working your way through so that you can get to that peace of mind to be able to think bigger on impact and legacy. Mm -hmm. um, and so wealthlegacyinstitute.com mm -hmm. Uh, is how I can be reached. We also talked about uh, retirement secrets and money secrets that could be purchased on Amazon. Uh -huh. um, and I just want you to know, Deb, that it is like no amount of money can create an extraordinary life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what we've been talking about. And I really just appreciate that. Thank you for being you and having this conversation. Well, and you know, we're not talking to the, the, the millionaires of the world. Um, you know, it's, it's the average people that that you know, really need to be thinking about this and and i think that's where we get lost in the shuffle is we think oh no you have to be the billionaire you know that mm -hmm. the oliver oliver oh dead if, oh it went out of my little brain the guy on gilligan's island um oh, right. oh yeah, yeah, yeah yeah what yeah. is it uh, oh, see okay i know old yes. dude um old you dude know, yeah you don't have or you don't have to be bill gates or you know the the, mm -hmm. the gazillionaires Mm -hmm. you, know, you just have to to be thinking about this so that you're comfortable when the time comes. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, how you do money is how you do life. So if you have your head in the sand around money, mm -hmm. you'll have your head in the sand around these other topics. Right. So show up. Lead. And the likelihood that that by that leading, it will be the life that you've desired and that you've, you know, that ideal calendar and perfect life. I love it. That's a good thought to, to leave us with. I always ask for a final thought, but I think that's a perfect final thought. Oh, so, I love it. Yeah, I am Deb Creer. I've been having a wonderful time and we need to do it again uh, because this these are issues that that are always going to be there. Um, and, and so I can't wait to have you on again. I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a great conversation with Kim Curtis. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.